Now, last week, you remember, we spent most of our time looking at and manipulating expressions. Do you remember what an expression was and how it is different to an equation. What's the difference between an equation and an expression? Thank you, an equal sign. That's it, simple difference. An equation has an equal sign. Most things we were looking at didn't have those. Do you want to go around that way? Grab a seat. Okay, grab a seat. Now, we are finally getting into equations proper, which means, yes, we are going to be solving these things. So I want you to remember, if I gave you an equation, any equation, before we get to solving these, are you getting sick of this yet? What does it really mean to solve something? What is it that you're doing? What is, by the way, what are the, um, what are you going to write as your final line? Go on, have a look at it. It's a simple one. I gave you a simple one on purpose. One, two, three, ne ne negative two and negative three. Okay? By the way, just a minor, minor, minor point. You can squeeze in there, you go underneath, or whichever. Let me make a minor point about this word, or. Uh, actually, why don't you just, I mean, it's only two lines, just have this written on the side, up in the corner, where you've got your heading. It really matters that you write the word or there. Uh, mathematicians, I've already said once, and I'm going to say it again, famously lazy, right? We will do as little work as we possible, possibly can, and we will write, just in terms of symbols and letters and numbers, as little as we possibly can, which means that two letters can make a really big difference because we really believe, mathematicians really believe, and you should really believe, in economy of communication. Say less, but mean more. There are two common things that you will see instead of the word all. And they are a comma or an and. Okay. Now, I'm going to suggest in this context that you write it exactly as I've written it and write it as all. Don't use a comma, and the reason why is because if you write a comma, I don't know what you really mean. I don't know if you mean or, or and, or something else. Which then leads to the next question, which is why, why not this one? Why not write and? Ah, okay, so what I'm looking at, and this comes back to the question of what does it mean to solve, right? Is I'm searching for values of x that satisfy this equation. That work that make this first line true. Do you agree with that? Now, I found two of them, but x can't be both of them simultaneously, can okay, it? We'll get to simultaneous equations later on. x can't assume both of these values at once, so it's one or it's the other. It's not both at the same time. Okay. Right. So, to solve equations, this is really, really simple. What do you do? What did you do to this line here? I mean, there's actually some intervening work there. What did you do in order to get your solutions out of it? Any suggestions? What might have been a preceding line to this one? Hmm. I, I reckon we would have factorized probably. So something like this. Okay. So what was it you did to the left-hand side? What, what's the name of that process? We spent lots of time doing it last week that made <coughs> this solvable. What did you do? You factorize. Very good. So that first thing, when you want to solve equations, you factorize. Factorizing is really, really useful. Okay? You might not get something that requires factorization. So if I gave you something like this, you wouldn't need to factorize that. There's nothing really to factor out. So what would you do to that instead of factorizing? Any suggestions? I, I heard expanding. Expanding is often useful. I don't really have any brackets to expand it or products or anything like that, right? What else could I do? Yeah. You just get like the unknown by itself. Okay, so what you're trying to do is you're trying to pin this guy in a corner, right? That's what your final line was, see? 
There he is, the pronumeral all by himself. Okay. So what will we do to get the pronumeral by itself? Yes, Lily. Okay, so I'm going to change the subject here. What might be the first thing I do to change the subject? Now you actually have two choices and both of them are fine, right? You can see there are two numbers in the way of you having x by itself. Um, I heard half you say uh, add 7 to both sides, that works fine. Alternatively, this 3 is also in the way, so you could multiply 3 by both sides. So I'm against fractions, so I'm going to multiply because I'm discriminatory like that. So then what do I do from there? I'm going to add 21, okay? Just a quick note, uh, what's that, 20, 33? Okay. What you're using, what you're taking advantage of, is what we call an inverse, right? In fact, you're doing it twice. Did you notice? From this line to this line, and this line to this line. Why was it that you chose multiplication from the first to the second line? Why did we choose multiplication? Why not division? Yeah. Okay, so we want this coefficient to just be 1. And the way to get there is to overcome this division. Do you see that? So division, you use multiplication to get rid of that. And what about from line 2 to line 3? What operation are we trying to overcome? We're trying to overcome subtraction, so we use addition. Okay, good. So what we're going to do is suggest not only factorizing, but if you want to rearrange, change the subject, what you do is you use inverse operations. to change the subject. I think that was the phrase that Celine used exactly. Okay, perfect. So you factorize, you use inverse operations. I've run out of space, but if you've got one line under there, there's one thing that we've kept in mind through everything here, which is that it's an equation, right? Like you told me, the key thing about an equation is that there's an equal sign there, okay? The equal sign is what it is. As the person who uh, devised it said, there are no two things more equal <coughs> than two equal in length parallel lines, right? So the sign itself is telling you what it is. In other words, the left and the right are the same, right? So you know when we, what do we do? We multiply by three, and then we added 21. Okay. The key was, since you started off with two things that are equal to each other, then you should keep it equal all the way. A nice easy way to say this is that you have to keep both sides, your left hand side, and your right hand side balanced, right? So you know how we said use inverse operations. The key to making sure you actually arrived at the right solution is not just by using inverse operations, but by using the same one every time. Left hand, right hand side, multiply both. Left hand, right hand side, add to both. 